So new project out of Briggs, uh, late 80s Briggs, um, uh, 11 horsepower, um, short block, short block, a uh, uh, vertical shaft. So this is, um, I'm just doing this just for the fun of it. Uh, I'm going to take the starter, we're going to take everything else off and stuff, and, um, starter, uh, stator, and, um, seal actually feels good, which is nice if they're hard or anything like that. Make sure you replace them. Other than that, they'll still be fine, or if there's any rips or anything in them. Um, and we'll take the stator off. And, uh, you know, all that other good stuff. I'll take it out uh, tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, maybe, I don't know. And we'll pressure wash it. Um, and, you know, get it all cleaned up and stuff. And then I'm going to put a paint coat on it. I'm going to clean off all the old paint and put a paint coat on it. Um, which I actually I may do while I still have it sitting here on the table. So that way I can pressure wash that all off. Um, anyways... Here's uh, some of the internals and stuff that are sitting here. Uh, camshaft. This camshaft does not have the compression release on it. Uh, some of these still have a little mechanism here. And that's a lot of the larger engines. They'll have the mechanism here. And then there's a little tab that comes over here. Which actually rolls up on the um, exhaust valve. And uh, the exhaust valve is the outermost one. So what's going to wind up happening is... As it were, all oh, this is the valve. So what that little tab will do is actually push up on the bottom of this tap of here, or lifter, whatever you call them, and they'll actually push up, just barely open the valve to allow the air to go past. That way, you can actually get the engine to turn over its first initial crank, and once the engine speeds up to like a couple hundred RPMs or some, usually with the starter, because it needs, it's gonna have to require it to get compression at some time. So once the engine speeds up with cranking, so once it cranks at a certain speed, it will close that off, and all of a sudden you'll get compression. Um, and once you get the compression, that's when the engine can start up. So it's just that that compression release works for the initial startup. This one doesn't have it, but I decided to explain it either way. So um, next we have the piston here and the rod. Everything's good on that. Nothing to explain. I will clean up the skirt with a little bit of emery cloth. Uh, you can see there's a few minor scratches. You can't really see them in the camera. And they're not bad at all. So what I just do is I stick it in the, the rod in the bench vise and just clamp it down very lightly because this is only an aluminum rod. And I just stick it inside there and then take the uh, with the piston on it. And then what I do is I just take the uh, emery cloth and I rub it on the side there and just and like, you know, kind of like that. And then with the other hand, be doing the same. I'm holding the camera right now, but I rub that along the edges there, and that uh, it cleans up any of the scratches and stuff, so that way oil don't get trapped inside there from the sump, and uh, like oil that splashes up, and a lot of times uh, that can aid in uh, less oil consumption and uh, better lubrication. Uh, that's just kind of like I said, it helps just to clean up all them scratches on the skirt. Uh, even though some people say they don't matter, they do a little bit, so. Uh, just clean them up the best you can with some emery cloth or whatever. Uh, same thing with the uh, crank journals, these ends here too. And that just cleans up any, uh, helps clean up any scoring, just makes it look a little shinier. Uh, just very, that just cleans up very minor scoring. Uh, you won't be able to take enough off to uh, take this, you'd be there for days and weeks doing that. Uh, governor seems pretty good. Um, you know. clean that up. Uh, this is also the oil sling here, just sits, since this is a vertical shaft, this dips down in there and this connects to the cam. This rolls along with it. Flyweights come up and control the governor, which I'll explain in a different video on how that works. Uh, I really don't want to explain it. I won't have enough time in this video. But this flings around here and uh, fly, splashes the oil up everywhere. Uh, it does feel like it's got some resistance on it, like it's like there's some dirt or some in it, so I'll make sure that's all cleaned out because they can feel it rumbling around. Uh, these are the balancers. Um, not all the engines have these. Some of the uh, bigger of the vertical shafts, single cylinders, also vibrate quite a bit. And all these do is these are just timed with these lobes here on the ends of the crankshaft, and these uh, counterweight the um, engine. So 
these will actually lift up as the piston is coming down or up. I never really paid attention. Um, I'm guessing as it's coming down, it'll be lifting these up, and as it's coming up, it's dropping these down. Because I'm just looking at that now, so uh, they'll be dropping these down here, and that will give the opposite motion. So as it's pushing up you're going to get that vibration of it moving up so instead it's going to absorb that by pushing these down and when it's coming down it's bringing these up so it's absorbing that so it's kind of like an opposed cylinder uh, engine it kind of has the same vibrations that that would have because of these uh, balancers you actually believe it or not you don't need these you could run this engine without it um, but your steering wheel would probably shake like crazy on your um, vibrate like crazy on your riding mower and uh now I'm just looking at it I only have one of these I don't I cannot believe we just lost the other hope it didn't roll off and fall in the trash because then I gotta go dumpster diving oh wait no it's right here oops it's another thing always make sure you don't lose any of your parts especially when you take apart any engine even these little engines I know there's not much to them but still you still gotta watch that Oh, and let me explain this little rod here. This little rod here, this actually keeps these from swinging back and forth inside the block. And these just pivot on here, and then this just mounts on. So as it sits in here, this rod is down in between there like that. And this is just an aluminum rod. It's very light. And then this sits on here, and this allows those uh, balancers to move up and down, but without hitting the inside and busting a hole through the block or doing any other internal damage um but anyways i'm not holding that cylinder with just some sandpaper uh, i'm not going to take the valves out i don't know if i discussed that but you know uh my valve spring compressor does not that long so you know and i know they have the grip ones but i'm not going to go invest 40 bucks in a tool that i just want to see this thing look good and run so uh there's nothing wrong with the valves to begin with so i'm not going to deal with them when I do a full engine rebuild I pull the valves out I actually take these into uh, my shop at Tech and I just resurface those valves faces there or do whatever I have to uh, to make these uh, valves look good and uh, then I just reseat them you, they also have valve cutter seats too that you can cut them down you can only take off about uh, just, a, just a little bit and whatever you take off on there you know you can take off on the other side but you got to remember what you take off on here and what you take off on there. This valve is going to sit in this block deeper, so you have to also grind the end of the stem. Not only that, you can only go so deep before these won't even seal correctly anymore because they'll be sitting down too far in the block. So you got to be, that's another thing. That's why if it doesn't really need it, I won't do it. Um, now lapping the valves, yeah, you can do that as a final. You don't have to actually, I shouldn't say that you should always do that either way. Uh, that just removes any burrs and really gets those valves to seat real good um, but you technically it would run even without doing that but uh, you know at least resurface your valves especially if they're pitted from an engine that has a lot of use on it so but this engine's fine so this engine has low hours so yeah we're gonna get that all back together base and the head back on and then what I'm gonna do is I am gonna throw a coat of paint on it and uh, yeah then it's just gonna all about customizing the blower housing and stuff. Here's the other base. I ordered uh, the base gasket and the head gasket. Uh, they were like 12 bucks with the shipping, which uh, they were actually very cheap. But then the shipping.